Hey everyone, I uh, hope everyone's been doing well. I've been kind of quiet again. I uh, fished a whole bunch this fall and then uh, had a string of commitments that sapped all my time. But uh, here I am sitting at the vise again doing a, another video. So I'm going to do a slump buster streamer today. Um, pretty small for your own thing specifically. This one's tied on a, on a number 12 jig with a 4.5 mil tungsten bead. Uh, often I see these tied with pine squirrel and I will also use pine squirrel but I couldn't get any pine squirrel in the color that that I wanted um, so I'm going to show you guys how to tie this with rabbit today. Uh, so just hairline this is brown barred ginger just the regular zonker and I put the zonker in my vise and I just split it lengthwise so this is actually the one zonker split it lengthwise and you're left with a really thin zonker so this is still very different than pine squirrel the obviously the fibers are still super long um, but we'll we'll get into it as we tie uh, there's a couple not a couple there's one thing that I do to kind of compensate the the lack of color you see if I just tie this in like that the front half is is gonna just be white um, so the pine scroll version I tie exactly the same except that one one step and also obviously I will hang these a lot shorter off the back end uh, with that being said let's get started so for thread uni 6 aught fire orange uh, I like the little hot spot that this leaves. If you don't want a hot spot, you could just use tan or whatever color fur you're using. You could match the color. Okay, so start at the top, put a thread base, and I'm going to go right about to where the bend is and then stop there. So now I'm going to select my piece of zonker. And for pine squirrel, I use, you guys can't see that, I use the width of my thumbnail for the, the leather, and then that's where I'll poke it. Uh, with the rabbit, I know it's, it's significantly longer, so I go maybe a quarter to three-eighths of an inch. And what I'm going to do is invert the hook. If you don't have a rotary vise, you just simply pull it out or flip it in the vise and then I'm gonna puncture the zonker so I want to go through the bottom of the hide and have the hook come out through the fur side so once that's done I'll remove it push it onto the hook and then I put the hook back in the vise so now we have the zonker pierced onto the hook. I'll leave the hook inverted and now I'm going to straighten the zonker out and I'm going to give it a part. And I want to, right where it's punctured here, I want to tie the strip down so I just go three wraps just one on top of the other nice and snug and that's it and now I'll pull the zonker to the side and I put three or four tight wraps in front of it okay I like to leave the hook inverted at this point. It just kind of keeps everything up and out of the way. So next step is the body. So for this, I'm using Ice Dub Gold. So you'll notice on the metallic colors, the Ice Dub uh, is like long, straight fibers. Uh, also, some of the pearls. Um, so that's the type of Ice Dub you want to use for this. Uh, for the body, it doesn't really matter. I mean, you could use, you could even use chenille, cactus chenille polar chenille um, but I like just the one material it makes these quick so I'm gonna apply my dubbing 
I don't want to go too crazy. I don't want a big shaggy body. Um, so I'm going to dub this fairly, fairly tight. And I want to leave maybe an eighth of an inch behind the bead to uh, tie in the rabbit and the rest of our flash. If you're having trouble dubbing ice dub super thin, uh, try licking your fingers. A little bit of moisture I find goes a long way and makes it a little bit easier to handle. Okay, so once we're up, you know, behind the bead you can see the, the beads moving around so I'm not tight to the bead. Now I'm going to stretch gently the zonker. And I'm going to part it again because I don't want to catch too much fur. I do want a little bit so it thickens it up, otherwise it's super noodly thin. And I don't want to catch this, you'll see again, it's not right up against the bead yet. I want to wrap it towards the bead with my thread to help lock it down. But also I want to leave some room there so when I cut it off, it's it's not protruding okay so it's about four four snug wraps and now I'm gonna cut the zonker and now you'll see again I still left myself a little bit of room okay so now the the issue with the long rabbit fiber you'll see if you look at the fly the top half basically has no barring right the barring is just at the bottom and I like the barring to be across the entire back with pine squirrel you don't have this problem that fibers are shorter so all I'm gonna do is get I don't know three-eighths of an inch or so of, of zonker and cut it and then I'm just gonna gather the, the tips of the fur and knock the back off and then I take the barred portion of the fibers here and I'm just going to push them over the back a little bit and just a few wraps so now if you look I have that barring down the entire back. Clip the front. There we go. So next step is more flash. So I'm inverting, getting to the bottom of the fly, and I'm gonna preen some of these gold fibers out not too too many but you know a little pinch wet my fingers and I'm gonna take the fibers and lay that on the bottom couple wraps and then I'm gonna fold the fibers that are forward over the back so that's going to be our belly flash and the fibers move incredibly well in the water they dance around really nice okay so that's the bottom and last step we are going to put a dubbing loop of bunny for the head so again we're working with really thin rabbit 
So what I like to do is actually double up the zonker. And I use the, the chip clip. So what I'll do is I have a bigger magic clip. I'll put them both in there and kind of preen all the fibers out. So I do the exact same thing with pine squirrel, but I'll just use one. I won't cut it in half to thicken it up. And so you don't have this big, long, unruly mess with the pine squirrel. And obviously if I were to dub this in, it's almost as long as the entire fly. So what I'm gonna do is grab just the ends with my chip clip. And then I'm going to measure up against the body where I want it, and I'm actually going to cut the rest of the fibers off. So here I'm left with much, much shorter fibers. Make a dubbing loop. And then I'm going to advance my thread right to the bead. So I put my rabbit in the loop, and then I'm just going to thin it out a little bit, and then also the, the top of the loop I'm going to be a little bit further out with the rabbit, so more of like a 50-50 split, whereas towards the bottom of the loop the fibers are going to be longer to one side if that makes sense and what this does is it kind of props up the back so I get a little bit more of a like a sculpin bullet head uh, versus if they're all just flowy fibers then you don't really get a lot of volume and I don't want to actually put too much material on this because I'm already using a, such a big bead uh, if I were to bulk it up more I might have to go even bigger still want to want to keep it thin and flowy okay so I've spun that up and now I'm just gonna use my velcro little stonfo tool here tease the fibers out and now I'm just gonna wrap forward so again lick my fingers and I'm gonna just put the moisture on the fibers and make make like a chenille of bunny here Just wrap forward. loud <laughs> okay so fly is, is pretty much done uh, if this was just one color uh, I would do my best to tuck the thread in nice and tight so you wouldn't see it uh, but I am using the orange thread for a hot spot here so I'm not gonna worry about that too much so now I'm gonna whip finish right up behind the bead so you can hardly see a little hot spot there um, so I'm going to do it again. Normally this would be it. Cut the thread off I go. But I will put a second whip finish in there to make a little bit more noticeable hot spot. And that's it. So it looks pretty unruly right now. But you see if I add some moisture it actually thins out quite nice and you get a really nice sculpin shape so started started messing around with these in the in the summertime and uh, had pretty good results uh, trout aggressively will 
will chase them and eat them. Um, so yeah, just a, a slump buster. Hope hope you like it. Hope you learned something. Tie a bunch up, fish them. I uh, didn't talk about the hook. Whoops. Uh oh, must add. I think these are pretty new. I hadn't seen them before. This is the J60 XAP. Um, looks like it's got like a tungsten, not a tungsten, like a Teflon coating on it of some sort. Real slick coating and a really long needle point. So thought I'd give them a go. And then bead, just a 4.6 mil metallic coffee bead, uh, whatever, gold, silver, I don't think the color matters too much, match your fly. There you go. Thanks for watching.